Look, since One UI 7 was such a big update, we were all kind of expecting One UI 8 to be a minor upgrade, meh. But turns out we were all wrong. I have the new One UI 8 beta running on the S25 Ultra, and this takes One UI 7 and just puts it to the next level. I mean, surprisingly good, and there's a lot of changes, some new features as well. This is Rupesh, you're watching Silicon, and I'm going to tell you all the changes, all the new features in One UI 8, even the minute hidden ones. But a subscribe is what I need. I mean, niceness should go both ways, right? <laughs> Oh, first up, I love when new update brings brand new wallpapers. I mean, who's with me on this? The One UI 8 brings these two new dynamic wallpapers and these are minimal and nice. You can choose from different styles and these are dynamic, like I said. AK will change colors throughout the day, so bright blue in the morning, orange in the evening, dark hues in the night. I also like how you get this gradient animation be it on the lock screen or when you unlock the phone. I'm pretty cool if you want to see different colors throughout the day on your home screen. Now moving on to the lock screen changes, the lock screen widgets are slightly better, so better readability all across. There's a new animated clock style in the lock screen customization options, which isn't a lot different from say this one, but yeah, animates differently. There's also a new create note shortcut that you can add to the lock screen, which opens up Samsung notes in a floating window. In fact, it's not just the lock screen, there's a ton of other visual tweaks and changes in One UI 8. First up, the home screen. All the widgets are slightly bolder and bigger, be it the Google widget or say any of the widgets from Samsung, you can see the difference. I also noticed that the widgets page now uses space better, so widgets are more stretched out, the previews show more widgets. The universal search in One UI that you can access from the app door also has a new UI and the different cards are also organized differently. Also, no more side scrolling for more options. Even when you search for something, you no longer get show more. Instead, this drop down icon to see more. Search in app is also changed to this arrow indicating the same. Also, when you tap on quick share in the quick settings, it now opens this nice screen, which has the send and receive tabs along with nice animations. And this new UI shows up wherever you tap quick share. The share sheet UI is also updated. You now get a floating window sort of UI. And it now has this secure folder tab to share it to apps inside the secure folder. Noise. One UI 8 also brings predictive back gestures to Samsung apps and places like the settings, unlike One UI 7, where it was limited to Google Apps. In the battery section, the advanced protection option now shows up as a separate toggle, but there's still no battery health percentage. I mean, come on, Samsung, even Android 16 works. Put on your screen, put Next up, now bar in One UI 7 was one of the great additions and it's getting a couple of new features. First up, now there's a small haptic feedback when you tap on the now bar. It even shows you the calls and call duration now, and it also shows you when the DND is turned on. Pretty handy for someone like me who loves turning it on accidentally. One UI 8 also brings a new multitasking feature that we saw in the Android 16 Material Material 3 Material that we saw in the Android 16 Material 3 Expressive Design, and it's very handy. See now, when you put two apps in split screen, you now have the option to split apps in the 90 to 10 ratio. On One UI 7, the best you could do is 70-30. Now, what this does is you can now jump between these apps like this. How awesome is this? I mean, this actually makes split screen more handy on usual smartphones. Moving on, One UI 8 also brings some big updates to a lot of Samsung apps, a lot of One UI features. For example, you can now find all the recorded calls directly from the contacts page, making it way easier to find all the recordings for one particular contact. Secure folder now lets you set separate fingerprints, so you can have a different finger that unlocks it. Very useful. There's also a new option to allow apps in your secure folder to run in the background when the secure folder is locked. The super underrated modes and routines app adds new integrations like reminders, notes, calendar, and clock. There's also new conditions here you can use. The reminder app now auto suggests you reminder names based on your previous reminders in the app. And there's also new sample reminders to try out like workout and monthly payments. The calendar app now lets you add reminders directly then and there when trying to add an event. The aura cast feature that lets you broadcast music to multiple devices now has a new UI. And now you can invite nearby people using QR code. They can scan it and instantly join your broadcast. Next up, the weather app has a new visual style. It shows you new people animations and visuals that are more detailed, rich, and like how the cards are more translucent now. It also has this new hybrid option for how you see the temperature, wind speed, and other units. Then there's the Files app, which shows categories at the top in a more sleeker manner. 
and also shows the recently added files here. It also gives you smart suggestions like renaming files particularly with long or you know generic names. The managed storage screen shifts options like duplicate files and large files up for you know easier access. Yeah, all very handy changes. The gallery app too gets minor tweaks. This menu page has a new UI as you can see, looks better. Also, when you go to edit, you see more of the photo now, and only when you choose an edit option, you get all the options. Lastly, remember this very useful camera gesture to switch between rear and front camera. Now, if you don't like this, you can change this gesture to bring up the quick settings like this. Look, going on, there's actually a lot of new features and a lot of changes in this One UI 8 beta. And yeah, I wasn't expecting it considering how big One UI 7 was. And this is just the first beta. Also, considering how Samsung has been sort of timely with the One UI 8 beta, Android 16 just launched, I'm expecting the stable rollout to be faster than what was the case with One UI 7. I mean, we should see the first stable build of One UI 8 with the folds and the flips launching in July, probably. And yeah, the stable rollout should be, you know, after that. Anyway, I want to know your opinion on the new One UI 8 update. Yay or nay? Did Samsung fix all the issues you had with One UI? Comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.